I'm here in London for the last few days, invited by the team behind Procreate, and I have seen the future. And it's called Procreate Dreams. During Playground's Motion Festival in London this year, James Callahan, Procreate CEO, took it to stage to unveil what they have been working really, really hard for the last little while, and it's a completely different new app that adds on to the amazing experience we already have in Procreate. And by that, we're talking about a new animation app packed with powerful tools that everyone can use. We will be able to create engaging hand-drawn animations, motion graphics over stills and footage, while enhancing them with audio and effects. And now the question is, is Procreate Dreams the perfect match to its original sibling, Procreate? Let's find out in this review. With Procreate Dreams, we will have a series of new features compared to Procreate's original app, which I'm putting here right now on screen. And although I just had a little bit of time to play with it after the talk from James, I'm going to try to highlight some of the things that definitely caught my eye. First and foremost, the revolutionary timeline structure. The app has been completely designed with an animator's mindset from the ground up. That means that you can zoom out in your timeline and see all of the groups and layers in a very, very organized and minimal way. Or you can zoom back in and you get to see and select particular elements that you see it on the timeline. And also what's really, really cool is that once you do that, once you zoom in, that little section of the timeline becomes your playthrough or the section that you're previewing. Now, I know this sounds like something simple, but being a designer and animator myself for many, many years, I cannot say how much time I have lost in other applications, such as After Effects, setting up the beginning and ending of the preview sections I wanted to see in my animation. For classical animators who prefer to work in a flipbook style, where you're just literally flipping those pages or frames with your fingers at the corner of the page, you can just drag the timeline down and you enter the flipbook mode, a setup where you see more of the screen or canvas and you get to draw and control every single frame. Onion scan, frames per second, canvas size, it's all there for us to tweak and change. We'll just have to get accustomed to where things have shifted around in this new experience. Next, the performance or record mode. We seem to be entering an era, or perhaps we're already there, of creative immediacy. And what that means is with platforms such as in AI creating stills and animation, in uh, real-time engines such as Unreal making games and art installations, everything is now happening without the time of post-production, without the time that it usually took for you. You have We all had to wait to for things to be rendered, for us to be able to see these things on screen or really moving which, by the way, was the next big thing. There is no waiting time when opening files, closing files, and playing files. There is no rendering. And that is all because Dreams is using the power of the iPad CPU plus the GPU, processing at a way faster speed than the CPU, helping to lift all of the hard work behind the scenes. Faster response times means faster changes, which means more productive freedom, more time creating, which ultimately means Procreate is doing innovation in animation. Another highlight to me was when James revealed Dream's maximum canvas size. As we all know, Procreate maximum square canvas is set to 16K, which at the moment is pretty good for most digital screen standards. But as we know, they always push the limits with everything that they do. And the maximum canvas now for Dreams is 1 million by 1 million pixels. And you heard that right. Personally, I only had five minutes to play with this thing and I couldn't try to generate the canvas and work with it, a canvas of 1 million. But if this number is there in the presentation and it's there in their future cards, I'm pretty sure that they have tested out and it works pretty good. And the do of the highlight was also when James said that there is now an infinite history in our files, meaning we can close those files, go back into gallery mode and then back into the file and we will be able to undo things. And then of course I thought to myself, but what about Procreate? We don't have these features and our canvas is 16K. It's actually smaller, although it's a great canvas. And to my surprise as well, James did say that those features are coming into the original version of Procreate. They might not be there in November 22nd when Dreams release, but they will eventually make it so. So the both apps have the maximum canvas size of 1 million pixels plus infinite history mode. 
Procreate Dreams will have its own file system, which will be called .dreams, and that's the technology that allows each canvas to run so smoothly and fast on iPads, and will also feature live effects. And this feature does make me really happy because it allows the ability to endlessly edit video effects, such as, uh, for example, as we apply some color correction in the original Procreate, that means it's always definitive once we hit OK, unless, of course, you make a backup copy of the original layer. Now, in terms of the actual hands-on with it, right after James' talk, Procreate had a booth with a bunch of stations for us to play with Dreams. And it was really incredible and a lot of people wanted to play with it. So I got in right away and was able to create probably the worst flying bird animation. But one thing that I did with a live performance mode that was already a bit of a light bulb that went over my head was the fact that once animation is done, you can still stretch things around. You can make things faster. And in this case, I just made the character jump a little higher or a little faster just by adding the performance once the keyframes were done. And I do find that as a big thing, which is being able to do more, not only being able to make things move, but to be fast and creative as you make things move. And this really is why and how Procreate is changing the animation world. If you, for example, ever wanted to make a short film or a short animation or even a long format animation, you can now do that from the comfort of your couch. You can do that from bed. You can do that at the park. You can just take five minutes every day. Procreate Dreams will allow you to chase the dream that you always wanted to create your own animation. Now, of course, every innovation has a price. And I also believe that we all got so used to just getting updates for free on the original version of Procreate that I do believe the audience was perhaps a bit surprised when we saw that there was a price tag at the end of the presentation. But I totally get it. This is a new app. This is something that they've poured their heart and souls into it for many, many months. And it's now a sibling to Procreate's original app, now dedicated fully for animation. Procreate Dreams is coming November 22nd this year, and it will cost $19.99 US dollars, and it will be available in 18 languages. Now, of course, I can't wait to get my hands on Procreate Dreams. When it comes out November 22nd, hopefully I can get a little sooner so I can start making some tutorials for you guys here at the channel and just being able to show what you can do and how we can enable us to create faster, more intuitive animations. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, a like would be super appreciated as well. Making sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these updates, videos, and now content for Procreate Dreams. Now on the right side of the screen, there's always more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube is recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching once again, and I'll see you on the next one.